Thank you so much, John, and definitely very excited to be doing this again, uh, especially with the, a nice wide range of meats to, to speak to. Um, we're going to be talking about pork, we're going to talk about chicken, and then the beef brisket. Uh, and so we do, I do have a lot to share because um, I certainly love talking about smoking meat. So let's just jump right in and we can talk about uh, the uh, pork spare ribs. Um, and we can talk about uh, ribs in general. Uh, just so you know, John, though, this um, nice little fun fact, maybe a, a party uh, <laughs> you know, question you got here. You know, spare ribs comes from the, the German Rippenspear, which literally translate to spare ribs or spear ribs, excuse me. Spear um, ribs. Did you know that, John? I didn't know that. And I've, I've actually spent a fair bit of time in Germany. And I know when the Germans come here, they, 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 love, the, they love the ribs too. So the, the Rippenspear. <laughs> That's that. right. So. Yep. And so this, uh, this little diagram gives us an idea of where the different pork ribs come from. Uh, and a lot of people can be intimidated or confused by pork spare ribs versus St. Louis spare ribs versus baby back ribs. Uh, and if we take a look at this diagram on the right hand side, you see the two plus three, that's your full spare ribs. So that includes the St. Louis cut and the rib tips. And so if you look over on the left hand side, you'll see how it's divided. Um, and with the, the the spare ribs, you know, it's definitely a bigger slab of ribs. Uh, they're longer, uh, a little bit meatier, um, but they are so good to cook. And the bonus, I think, with when you do a, a pork spare ribs is that you have those rib tips that you can use You can slice those off when you're shaping up your, your pork spare ribs. And essentially, you know, once you do slice those rib tips off, you're creating a St. Louis cut. Uh, but those rib tips, you can use, you can smoke those and then pull them off, put some barbecue sauce on them, get them some direct uh, grilling, and they will make for a perfect appetizer. But it just it adds to um, the glory, in my opinion, of, of doing pork spare ribs and nothing you should be afraid of, of trying on your own. The baby back ribs, as you can see, um, will definitely come from the, the top portion of the of the pig of the ribs and they're they're shorter in length but they still have quite a bit of meat uh very popular uh cut of of ribs uh and i don't think you can go wrong with trying uh any one over the other uh, i just have a good time and, and really enjoy doing the pork spare ribs myself so if we want to kind of talk about how we would actually prepare these or smoke these we can move on to that next slide Hey, Mike, and, can I jump in? Um, just sorry to you know, interrupt you all the time. John. So, because just on the kind of tying um, the different types of ribs, and I, 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 I'm a novice, obviously. Um, so, and, and it kind of it, it comes to our customers too. I was just actually out of Nebraska land a couple of weeks ago, and they they deliver a lot of fresh ribs to butcher shops, to sure. mom and pop. But, but there's a real trend in like freshest meat you can get, and that's that's really their. Um, bread and butter, you know, they're using mobile co conductor right. to do that. Um, and then for me, I walk into, a, I won't name the grocery store, but your major chain grocery store. And there's that pack that's like hermetically sealed and it's, it's you know, two racks in there. And I, I don't know what kind of is, there's got to be benefit, obviously, I'm probably overstating the obvious, but, you know, fresh meat, if you can find your local butcher, that's probably the best place to get these things. Is the, and I don't want to start an argument here on fresh meat because our, our customers do both, right? The, the frozen. But sure. is there is there a market difference um, for a novice like myself to just say, hey, I'm at I'm at Safeways or, or whatever the, the market is. I'm going to grab one of those things that look like probably getting too much detail here, but they always those always say like previously frozen. So are are are, are we are we cutting corners? Um, no no pun intended. Uh, no, I don't think so. I, I really have not had any issues with flavor, tenderness, you know, the finished product essentially of uh, spare, you know, ribs in general from a, a grocery store. Getting so, it from the, the, the butcher is, is definitely going to be a, a little bit fresher of a cut. You're going to pay a premium price, uh, but I don't think you can go wrong with getting something from your, your local grocery store. Uh, and a lot of times, I'm purchasing it for a later cook, so I'm going to freeze it again. 
Right. Um, and I have, I haven't had any trouble with, you know, the meat taking on any smoke coming out juicy and tender. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think too, and again, not to drop uh, commercial names, but Costco seems to have, they have on-site butchers. They seem to have super fresh stuff. I've done, uh, you know, pork bellies and things. I know we're not talking about yeah. those today, but yeah. So sorry to interrupt. Let me get, let you get back to the. That That's meat. fine. No meat worries. Meat. So looking into the details of smoking spare ribs and, and I like to think you could probably, you could go ahead and apply this methodology or this cook method to uh, your, your St. Louis uh, ribs and your, your baby backs. Uh, but you're looking you're, like a total cook time about four to five hours. Uh, and I would recommend going at a temperature of 250. You can go lower 225, you can go higher 275. Um, but I think if, if you take your time in that, that 250 range, you just can't, can't go wrong. Uh, and the wood that I usually like to prefer is a combination of hickory and cherry. Uh, and I mentioned this before with uh, smoking pork butts, it's a great combination for, you know, hickory adding the smoke flavor and the cherry adding uh, the color to the, to the ribs or to the meat. But the pecan is a very good substitute for hickory and peach and apple are also really good fruits uh, to add some color and additional flavors, flavor profiles uh, to your ribs. But uh, using the a method where you would probably give your, your ribs about two, two and a half hours of actual smoke. And then I would pull them off and, and wrap them up in a, a double uh, foil sheet, double foil sheet packet with maybe some extra seasoning. Uh, could, you could use some honey, uh, some brown sugar, uh, maybe even some barbecue sauce or some, some apple juice as well. And then wrap them back up and put them back on to the smoke for about two, two and a half more uh, and then at that point, you should be able to come to the point where you want to find out if your ribs are done. And a very good method for figuring this out is to pull the ribs off and kind of lift the ribs up into the middle section. And if both ends of the ribs stay on your, your pan or the grate or wherever you have them resting, then you know you've got the tenderness that you need. It's not going to be that fall off the bone, which you don't typically want. You want to be able to have a good bite through where it's, you're not going to rip the whole piece of meat off the bone. You'll still be able to pull it off if you want to, but you want to have a good bite through. And that's what you're going to get once you do that, that little bin test, basically, where the ribs will stay on the sides right. or on the ends. Uh, and then, of course, another uh, telltale sign is the meat pulling away from the end of the bone. So if the meat's pulling away from the bone, maybe about a quarter to a half inch, you're definitely got a good cook on those ribs and they're ready to come off. A lot of people at this point, we would let them rest in a cooler uh, and maybe soak up some of that juice. And I would recommend letting them rest for a little bit, but then a lot of people want to put, you know, some sauce or a glaze on them to finish them on the, on the smoker and maybe even give them a little char or crust on the top. Uh, and you can certainly do that. Um, I'm, I'm a fan of it, and I think it adds a little additional flavor. Um, so uh, that is essentially how I would, you know, go through and use, you know, the methods for cooking ribs, spare ribs. And like I said, it could apply to all three uh, different racks. Um, so that's uh, what I would what I would do and what I would recommend. And I've had very good success with it. Uh, no one's, no one's given them back to me. So that's a, <laughs> they never that's send them thing. back. They never, send, yeah, they you, you know, a couple, couple of huge takeaways and maybe I was asleep on the, on the, on the last session when, when you were talking. So only smoke for the first couple hours. That's I, so I, I got a Sharpie yeah. here and I've just made a big uh, note. Uh, Cause I just run them through I, again, I'm coming from the, the, the first timer sort of school. But I run them through to just smoke, and I think I even add smoke towards the end. Which so so two hours of smoke, pack them up, and you showed that last time where they're kind of coming out of the foil. Um, yeah, which with is, the with the Boston butt. That's right. You can right. certainly take your ribs straight through four hours without wrapping. But I like to I like to wrap them because that definitely is going to add some more. Uh, well, it's going it's going to capture all that juice within the foil pack, right. and it's going to get reabsorbed into the meat. Yeah. Uh, so that I know I'm going to produce, I'm going to produce some very tender, juicy meat. It's not going to get dried out, or I'm not going to be scared that it's going to it's going to dry out because I've cooked it a little bit too long. Sure, and yeah. and I think my my second takeaway too, and again, you, you um, 
is that we don't want the fall off. I always say, yeah, it's fall off the bone. That's like kind of the expression <laughs> when they're it good. Is. And it's like, there should be, like you're saying, like a, still a little bit of, little bit of effort to, to get that. That's good. So those are my kind of two takeaways. Um, yeah. And I Unless think, you're making a McRib sandwich, <laughs> the, you don't need mac, it to be like completely falling off the bone, you know? <laughs> the mac rib is back and, uh, and yeah. wash that down with a shamrock shake, right? So, Correct. <laughs> um, so, but that's yeah. good. And the, are there any, um, just on the, on the woods and the, and the, and the, and the smoking and the spices and stuff, are there any like um, with certain kind of meat do not use, like is, is, and you may get to this, like hickories do not use if it's because I know you're moving on to chicken here in a sec once I let you right. know. Um, do not use the kind of cross. There must be a, a, a grid, a, met, a matrix somewhere where it says like, you know, chicken and fish that never use these. Sure. Of things. Yeah. And I think we may have mentioned this in our first one. We definitely wouldn't want to use a strong wood flavor for something like seafood for, for like fish. So you wouldn't really want to necessarily use hickory unless it's a very small amount. Yeah. Uh, and for my pork products that I like to produce or smoke, I always like to go with hickory and cherry because I think it's a, a very good flavor profile. Uh, you could, I've done oak before, but um, I really prefer oak with beef. I think that really pairs better with, with beef and with that, that sort of meat uh, yeah. than it does with, um, with pork uh, yeah. or even, even chicken. So, yeah. and speaking of chicken, let's go ahead and take yeah. a look at our, our next slide there. And we're gonna talk about a method of smoking uh, chicken, and that's the spatchcock method, which is essentially where you remove the backbone from the chicken, you flatten it out so that you get an even cook throughout the entire bird, breast, your thighs, your legs, everything should re receive the same amount of heat and cook uh, uh, and finish uh, basically the exact same time. And I believe we put together a bit of a video here that we could show uh, to demonstrate the spatchcock method. Yeah, here we go. So right here, this is probably a five pound bird I think I picked up. And before I wanna even get started, uh, I'm just gonna expect, inspect it, make sure everything is good. But my cutting board is sliding on me. And here's a quick little trip or trick for you guys is to wet a piece of paper towel and put that down on your counter and then put the board over top that way it's not going to slide on you and you're not going to have some unfortunate mishap where somebody needs to drive you to urgent care. That uh, would not be good. And, and then that ruins your entire day and no one else gets to eat the uh, smoked meat. That barbecue is no fun, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, some of your cutting boards would have uh, some rubber feet on the bottom, but uh, this one did not. And so here, I think I'm showing how you would go down the side of the, of the backbone and I definitely recommend picking up a pair of some good kitchen shears. Uh, they're not too costly, uh, but they're well worth having uh, and definitely make this an easy uh, task to, to take on. You can use a, a butcher knife if you want, but this one is a little bit safer and much easier. I mean, it's got the tool uh, there for you. It's, excuse me, specifically, you know, for doing something like this, cutting through bone. Uh, it's not that uh, difficult with the chicken. Uh, there's some resistance there. You're definitely going to have a harder time with, with uh, a turkey, uh, but uh, it's, it cuts through pretty easily. And then it, you want to do some additional cleanup with that chicken, you know, remove any excess fat uh, or anything else on the inside, but you're not done yet. You need to flip that bird over and then take the palm of your hand and place it into the center of the, the two breasts breast and press down on that breastbone you'll know when you've uh you've hit pay dirt <laughs> when you hear that nice crack that crack uh yeah. and it will flatten out your bird there uh and uh, make it nice and even and level uh and if you want to if your whole goal is to maybe get some of that crispiness on your on your skin you can certainly still do that and, and apply uh, smoke flavor to it, but I would recommend drying off the skin like I'm doing here with the paper towel and then placing it on a wire rack uh, that's situated on a pan and put that in your refrigerator for a couple hours. You can go as, as low as you know one hour, but uh, a couple hours adds a little bit of extra dryness to that, uh, that skin and so that you would uh, hopefully, you know, essentially at one, when you're smoking it, uh, kind of roasting that skin and get some crispiness 
-hmm. The thing is though, you'll definitely want to cook your, your, um, or have your cooker going up to a higher temperature above uh, 250 or, or above that smoking level. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's go ahead and talk about that whole smoke method or cook method. And I like to anything... use, oh, sorry, you know, no, no, no worries. Just I quick. like to use some cherry or pecan. I also have, have used hickory before, but pecan is a good substitute, like I said earlier, uh, for hickory because they're, they're both in the same nut tree family. Uh, but with it, if you want that crispy skin, get your temperature and your smoker about 325 to 350. Uh, throw your seasoning on it, put it, put it on there for one and a half, two hours. I think it probably would, uh, I would definitely check it at the one, half, one and a half hour mark. You should be able to get that 170 uh, temperature inside the thighs and 160, 165 for your breast. Uh, but this will definitely still give you some good smoke flavor on the meat but it will crisp up that skin so you can have some bite through uh, and, and serve that to your guests and you don't have to pull it off and it's not gonna be rubbery or nasty. That higher temperature is gonna re render the fat in that skin and make it crispy for you. If you are gonna smoke it, uh, you can go with the 250, you know, 225, 275 uh, temperatures, but I wouldn't necessarily do anything with the skin after that. It's gonna be rubbery, it's not gonna be very good. A lot of times when you when you go with that type of smoking method with chicken, you don't want the skin. You'll just take that meat, shred it up, and you'll make your you know pulled chicken sandwiches or your you know, chicken salads, uh, smoked chicken salads, which are really, really good. Uh, so that's how I, I would do uh, a spatchcock chicken, though. I really enjoy having that bite through with that skin, and uh, I like to go to that 325, 350 temperature. Do you have any questions for me, John? I have a ton of questions. Our producers are saying we're running. <laughs> our producers in my ear well, saying we're, we're running out. We're going to jump into brisket, though, aren't we? Yeah, I think we might have to. But we got to uh, talk about brisket because brisket is the most popular piece of meat out there. I think these days to smoke. Uh, thank you, Aaron Franklin. Right. Yeah. Um, so it, it can be pricey, especially if you're going for a prime cut of, of brisket from Costco or wherever. Uh, choice can a choice cut can be just as good. Uh, but you're definitely going to spend uh, even, you know, 50 bucks or, or a little bit higher for a choice cut. Uh, and then, of course, your next question when it comes to brisket is, do I want to do the full brisket, the full packer, or do I just want to do the flat? Uh, which, you know, if we take a look at the next slide, we can see where the flat resides and where the point is. The point is on that top bottom part, and there's a fat line separator between the two cuts of muscle, the two pieces of muscle, uh, the flat obviously kind of resting on top of that, uh, of, that, uh, of that point. And a lot of times when you want that, when you want the point or you do a full packer, your, your goal with that point kind of in the end is to, you can break it shredded, you can shred it, um, but a lot of people want to make those burnt ends, the, the brisket burnt ends, which are fantastic. You would, Want to make a decision beforehand whether you want to separate the flat before you smoke it you know separate separate it from the point before you smoke it or after you smoke it um i i've done it before and i think it's a little bit easier to find that that fat line and get things separated plus it kind of frees up a little bit more space on your on your smoker uh, but you can certainly do it at the end just make sure you have some insulated gloves when you're handling that hot piece of meat it might be a little bit more difficult to find that, that fat line, but you should be able to separate it. And then you want to cube up your, your, your point meat, put some sauce on it, and then put it back in the smoker to take on a little bit more smoke and a little bit more heat so you can produce that bark or that, that extra crust on it uh, that makes it a burnt end. Uh, and they are fantastic. So I definitely recommend uh, trying out, trying your hand at the, uh, the burnt ends. And when it comes to trimming, you probably want to have maybe a quarter inch of fat on that on the flat part. The point will cook a little bit faster because it has a bunch of fat running through it. Uh, and there's there's probably going to be some fats along the sides that you want to you know remove that won't render down some really hard uh, you know uh, nasty kind of ugly looking fat that you'll want to take off. Uh, but that's, that's what I would do with this brisket. And if we can talk about the, the cook method, 
I would run this probably at 250. I tell you, that really is kind of like the bread and butter, like, you know, temperature for me with, with smoking on a, on a stick burner, um, uh, an offset smoker. It works very well. And I love to use oak. Oak can burn longer and provides a really good flavor for that, uh, that meat. And it also gives you a good, good heat. Uh, so when you're smoking a flat or you're smoking a full pack, you're definitely going to be some differences in, in cook times here. You know, most of your flats are going to be five, maybe seven pounds, and your full packers are going to be anywhere from 12 to 16. They're going to be huge pieces of meat. So you need to make sure that you've got <laughs> your afternoon, your evening, or your entire day ready to go for a, a full packer or a flat, whatever it may be. But your, your flats are going to take anywhere from six to eight hours um, before you would, uh, uh, well, that's not even... I'm talking about wrapping that's full end to end, even if I wrap it in the middle and then finish it. Uh, and the same, the full packer, you're looking at 10 to 15 hours. Uh, you can cheat technically, uh, but uh, you know, your, your hard uh, core smokers are going to put it on that smoker and have it there for the duration. Uh, I do prefer to, to wrap them after a certain period of time, maybe six hours, butcher paper, something like that, uh, and throw them back onto the, the smoke. Um, but that is definitely a, a good method of, of smoking brisket. Uh, one thing I probably didn't mention, I'll mention it right now, uh, I would inject the brisket. I would use uh, an injection and you can buy an injection or you can make your own, but that will add a lot of good flavor and extra juice to that, uh, that piece of meat. Make it a little messy, uh, but uh, it's, it's well worth it in my opinion. That's perfect. Yeah, I think you should should do an injection on the on the last session with the pork shoulder. So that's that's right. Similar similar technique, I guess, with with uh, the brisket. So absolutely perfect. Yep. So, uh, any questions for me? Well, let's do this. I've been hogging all the questions. Let's see if um, uh, if we have any from the audience. Can you see yes. those too, Mike? We do have a couple questions that I'll right. read out to you. Thanks, Georgia. Sure. So the first one being, um, which I think you kind of covered, but are there any shortcuts to cooking a brisket? Yeah, I didn't want to give it away right away, but uh, <laughs> yes, there there is definitely a, a shortcut you can use. Uh, so the piece of meat is really not going to take on, um, well, it's only going to take on so much smoke. Uh, I'll usually go four to six hours with a big full pack or brisket. You could go shorter than that as far as applying smoke to the, to the meat. But once it takes on enough smoke or even reaches that stall temperature, which is like a 160 internal, you could take it off and wrap it or put it into a foil pan with maybe some little braising liquid and throw it in your oven to 25, 250, and then come back four or five hours later and you will have a, a very good piece of meat. And you can save on your fuel from your, uh, for your smoker. That's great. So that's a, that's a, that, that's a shortcut. <laughs> that's okay. great. Another question is, is it necessary to remove the membrane from the bottom or bone side of the ribs? That's a great one. What's the answer <laughs> to that one, Mike? I, pref that one? I prefer it. I don't, I don't want that membrane on the bottom of my cooked ribs because it's a weird texture and it's very odd, but the, I don't know. I think maybe the barbecue smoking world it might be a little torn on that. Some people don't want to waste their time. They don't like trying to tear it off because it's, it's not the easiest thing to do. Yeah. Um, but I, I prefer it. I prefer it being removed. It may add a little bit more smoke to the meat or cook it a little <laughs> bit faster. I don't think it's going to be really, it's going to hinder you too much. Uh, but I, I would remove it. You do. Okay. Yeah, no, I think I've done that in the past. And I, I and then you, then the, you, as you're doing it, then the first article you read, say, leave it on. And you, you're, you're halfway through that, that little peeling method. So, right. Um, yep. Yeah. So you leave it on. That's good. Good question. Sorry. Go ahead, Georgia. One more question. Um, are you spraying all these cuts with anything? Uh, I'm not spraying them. Uh, well, I take that back. I will spritz the ribs and I will spritz the, the beef um, or, the, or the brisket. After about uh, one and a half, two hours on the brisket, I'll, I'll spritz it with like an apple juice combination 
And then with the ribs, I would do an apple juice as well. Uh, and I would probably do that after an hour of smoke on the ribs and then every 30 minutes doing the same thing. Uh, another good question that, uh, that I see here from Jeff is, you know, do I want to soak wood chips in beer or another liquid? I don't use any wood chips. And if I was to use wood chips, I would use them for something I might be doing a direct grill method with instead of a, an offset or a uh, indirect um, method. Um, but soaking your wood chips in a, in a liquid will, will help slow the burning effect of, of those chips. Uh, so I understand the methodology behind that, but I don't typically soak wood. Uh, I'm, I'm not with any of the cooks that I do when I'm, when I'm smoking meat and I really want to put some smoke on that meat. 